Sony and Honda made a new high-tech car. Samsung is making technology for ships. Amazon is making their own version of Starlink. And I went to Sphere in Las Vegas. It's been a crazy January for me. I went for my first CES. I flew to Las Vegas for CES 2025 in the front cabin, the Delta One cabin on the plane. It was definitely that first class treatment here. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Immediately I landed, I went for Nvidia's keynote where the CEO, Jensen Wang, announced the latest GPU series, the RTX 50 series GPUs powered by the black hole architecture. The next day, I went to Sphere in Las Vegas and let me tell you, the experience is one to behold. 580,000 square foot of LED displays on the outside, 160 square foot of LED screens that wraps around the interior. I mean, that's definitely something. Delta was celebrating 100 years at CES and they definitely pulled a lot of stops to get this keynote alive here. Sphere is definitely a work of art. But that aside, I saw what Delta was working on. They were working on the first aluminum bag made from aircraft skin from retired Delta jets, jets that were not in use anymore. This is what that looks like. There was a massive audience here. I believe Sphere can take up to 20,000 people in the hall. There was the partnerships, the projects, and we even ended this event with a concert. I made a video on Instagram sharing everything that went down there. It then came time for me to head to the exhibition floor and I have a confession to make. I know I like tech a lot but I also really like cars a lot and I saw a lot of them at CES and it seemed nearly every brand had a car to show us. Honda showed us the Honda Zero series, saloon and SUV cars at CES and boy did I spend a lot of time there. I think the first thing that came to my mind was when did Honda change their logo? But again, I remember that they just did and I just hadn't seen new cars with their new logo, at least in Nigeria. The new cars look solid for sure and one thing that caught my eye was the rear light at the back of the Honda Saloon car. It has this retro feeling but it's unique in its own way and futuristic at the same time. The front of the car looks even sharper with thin lines and it just looks fast. Honda says they are going back to zero to redefine cars and make them thin light and wise. I also like the front of the SUV version. The design looks unique for sure. At the sides, it looks like something that you will find in a space movie and this one follows the trend with the rear lights being unique. And to top all of this off, the car will be self-driving. It uses ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Of course, this will be with the help of AI sensing technology and recognition slash decision making driver monitoring technology. From the teasers, it seems that the car will learn how you drive and adapt its driving style to it. These cars are set to launch in 2026. And to top it off, I also got interviewed by the Honda Zero team. There was also Snapdragon, which we all know to be making chips, but this time around they had a car in their display. They had other things in their display, but they had a car in display. At Snapdragon, they had a smart bike in their booth, but it was the car I was after. Quick disclaimer, Snapdragon does not make cars, but they made the technology powering this particular one. First off, with an app, you can open the doors automatically. We got into the car and it showed us the dashboard with the Snapdragon digital chassis. It's a dashboard with a Samsung display powered by Unreal Engine with very responsive graphics. They train this tech with the manual of the car so it can respond to any questions you may have about the car with just your voice. You can ask it to change things like the ambient light, take a photo of the road and tell you a story or just about anything your typical AI model can do. Other than the digital chassis, I thought the car was very spacious and roomy. I like the look of the car, the driver's seat, the unique steering yoke and everything in between. On the outside, it does not disappoint as well. It looks really well made and sporty even though it's not a real car. One thing I noticed is that smart cars just decided that mirrors don't really matter and pretty much all the smart cars or nearly all the smart cars I saw at CES have cameras for side mirrors. I then saw a Sony and Honda collaboration called the Afila. This car starts at $90,000 and it's expected to have 40 sensors including 18 cameras, one lighter, nine radars, and 12 ultrasonic sensors, both inside and outside the vehicle. This is also a self-driving car with ADAS. It has a media bar in the vehicle's front face. The idea behind this is for the drivers and passengers and people outside the car to have seamless communication. Of course, certain features of this car will be subscription based and Sony gives you a three-year complimentary subscription for certain features. The interior also features a yoke steering with a very large dashboard and the seats looked cool. I like the simple look of the exterior and overall this was the most normal looking electric slash self-driving car I saw at CES. I went to the LG booth and oh my god. First of all, the entire booth was made from the paper that they used to box products, their TV products. There was a seat, 
there was the standing area there was the table and it was all made from paper the paper they used to box their products at the lg Inotech booth i also saw something car related with a screen in front this looked more animated with a charging graphic there's also a screen at the back and you can show something like a caution sign for instance or write something for the car behind you or pedestrians in front of you to see the idea behind this car technology is its advanced sensors there's a ton of sensors around this car there's one in the front there's one in front of the tires there's a sensor around the mirror there's a sensor on top of the car they're just sensors all around the car the more i pass by this car the more i see more sensors <laughs> there's a wireless battery management system even more sensors there's technology for car lighting and driver monitoring cameras to know whether the drivers are feeling drowsy it's not a car but it's what the future of cars can have i also saw a clip where the car's charger can just plug into the car by itself which is cool Hyundai also had Hyundai Mobis and the technology was HOE, which, okay. The Hyundai Mobis team showed us holographic windshield display technology. Now, this technology uses something called holographic optical elements or HOE to project images in high brightness to only one person like the driver or the passenger at eye level. So only the driver will see what's in front of them and the passenger can't see. The passenger can, for instance, be playing a game on the windshield watching a movie or just viewing something and the driver won't see what they're viewing. They also showed us mBrain, a brainwave based monitoring system. This is what it looks like and once it's worn, it can scan your brain to know whether you're sleepy or not paying attention to the road and provide warnings. It also has modes like vibration on the seats and lighting to keep you calm or awake. At CES, BMW had their own building for a booth and I got to see the Neu Class A or the new class in person. These cars are not available for purchase just yet, but they are the next generation of BMW's innovation and they probably will be coming out this year. The new class is slated to have 30% more range, 30% faster charging and 25% increased efficiency according to BMW. It looks very minimal and sports their latest technology. They created the new BMW Panoramic iDrive, a new display orientation that focuses on the driver. It's tilted to the left and features a colorful digital dash around the bottom of the windshield, of course, with heads-up displays. I also went to Waymo and funny thing is, in Las Vegas, there were Waymos in a couple of places, you know, the driverless cars. You just be walking randomly and you just see a car passing you with no driver inside somebody's in the back seat i saw the waymo minivan with the gigantic sensors at the top and around the car i think it's interesting to see a waymo car up close but it also makes sense that it's this large like the sensors are this large because this thing literally drives itself and drives people with it it better get it right whether it looks like that i then saw the second vehicle with a similar size sensor this is the jaguar i-pace fully kitted with all the waymo sensors on top and around the car would you enter a car that has no driver in it and drives you around you know like a taxi everywhere you go yeah welcome to the future i guess waymo has been in existence for a while sure but seeing it live in it just feels weird and i hope i take a waymo sometime maybe this year i then saw a delorean bmc 12 the back to the future car it looked novel and like something out of a video game. I saw the Holon Mover, an autonomous slash driverless shuttle bus. This is meant for ride hailing and ride pulling services. And I ask again, would you take a bus that has no driver in it and drives itself all around town? Let us know in the comments below. Amazon at CES this year had two cars, a BMW X3 that features the BMW Intelligent Personal Assistant powered by Alexa for in-car interactions where you get to talk to your car. This year, BMW and Amazon will beta test LLM powered features for more conversational navigation and trip planning. Akira was also at an Amazon booth for the same reason. I then saw Amazon's version of Starlink called Project Kuiper. It's a low earth orbit satellite broadband initiative that is aimed at providing fast, affordable internet services to underserved communities worldwide, just like Starlink. And it should launch early in 2025. When it comes to the speed range, according to Amazon, it will be between 100 to 400 Mbps and then up to 1 gigabit per second for corporates and governments. I wasn't fully done with LG though. I got to the LG display booth with all these blocks that moved based on what was being shown on the display. I imagine that this was pre-programmed, but still it looked cool. LG is famed for their display technology and they definitely had something to show 
at CES here. They had the world's first true wireless 4K OLED transparent screen and this is what that looked like. It was just very captivating to see. It looked sharp up close and surreal at the same time but what use case do you think this would be for? Well, one of such use cases for this is a transparent display overlay with home visual elements that you know, they use themselves to showcase this. LG makes appliances and this is one way to communicate those features with a transparent display. So around the same area, I then saw their world's first and largest 5K 2K OLED gaming monitor. Here it's connected to a Moza racing simulator and it's a 45 inch LG Ultra Gear GX9 series OLED gaming monitor. It has a resolution of 5120 by 2160 with a 0.03 milliseconds response time and a refresh rate from 165 hertz to 330 hertz. It's curved, very curved. And when I saw it and tested it, it looked so sharp and very crisp. I'm using my phone to record this and it looks this sharp. Anyway, this is how it looked like on the rear side. It has this accent lighting and it can be tilted, height adjusted and swiveled. Of course, I had to test the racing simulator myself and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved the display. It was really cool. Samsung had the largest booth at CES. They showcased everything we know they do from smartphones, tablets, robot vacuums, refrigerators, washing machines, TVs and more. But of course, in the spirit of CES, they had a car here. This time it was by Hyundai and you can connect it to Samsung Smart Things. Speaking of Smart Things, Samsung Heavy Industries showed us a smart ship powered by smart things. You can manage all the devices in your ship from your ship's temperature, lights, appliances and everything in between. Whether it's a cruise or a container ship, you can manage everything with smart things as well. I saw another minivan, the Zcar Mix, which is a five-seater battery-powered vehicle by Geely Automobile and it was sold exclusively in China before. I saw it at CES here and the rep mentioned it costs 40,000 USD and I think it's not bad. It looked really interesting. It's very spacious, that's for sure. And the design is quite good too. The Zika also had a large MPV or multi-purpose vehicle called the 009 Grand. It's really spacious. It definitely looks grand with that very large TV screen in the back seat and it exudes that first class seat feeling and definitely has that exclusive vibe to it. At Suzuki, they talked about their philosophy of the small, light and beautiful. That's what this mini shuttle bus was designed for. It's called the Glideways and it's a futuristic, fully autonomous vehicle that is meant for public transit. I checked out the Gates Foundation and I made a reel about what they were doing with health tech on Instagram. I do implore you to watch that video. It's very interesting. I saw a robot that cleans glass walls by itself and I saw a smartphone pro lens by Newer. I saw an F1 car, McLaren, Koenigsegg, Nikon's visually engaging booth and Bosch's binary ceiling. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. This was my first series and I'll say that I was kind of overwhelmed at the same time but I was very amazed at what I saw and I can't wait to get to the next one. I hope I see you in the next CES. Thank you so much for watching again. See you in the next one.